All right, guys, I am making a very, very thorough, it's probably going to be 20 or 30 minute video about this 1988 Ford E150 with a 4.9 liter inline six 300 with a factory ordered manual five speed transmission. So just so you know what you're looking at, um, that is, and it's a short wheelbase, two wheel drive, obviously. So, so you know what you're looking at, but I'm going to go through the good, the bad, everything I know about this van because I'm putting it up for sale and I want somebody else to see in and out of it. I don't want you wasting my time. Um, I won't waste your time. So I will give you everything I know, which is extensive because I've gone through this thing front to back, top to bottom, you name it, it's been done and I will get into it. And there's a pile of receipts from the previous owner for work that was done in the I don't know, probably five, six, seven thousand dollar range between just maintenance, um, locker put in the rear, just tons and tons of paperwork on it. Obviously, I can't get into every piece of paper, but I'll show you what I can with that container that has all the receipts. So let's get into it. It's a 1988 short wheelbase E150. It is not a club wagon. Um, those badges I got, I uh, thought they could looked kind of cool. Uh, made it look a little bit nicer and newer, I thought. It did not come with a chrome grill. I put that on. Um, I have another grill for it that is black in the garage that will be included in it, in the sale. Um, also included with it will be a spare tire carrier that was never mounted on the back but was made for one of these. It's black. Um, it You would have to drill the rear hinges and drill the door and you could mount a spare tire. I was going to, but I decided not to do that to it. Uh, what else? There's a few other parts in there. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, this being a manual transmission, the previous owner towed it behind his motorhome. So there is a uh, tow bar assembly that bolts up underneath the front. There's no tow bar, but the assembly that everything hooks into is included with this van too. All the holes are already there. Um, everything's there. It was on the van when I bought it. I took it off because I had no intentions of ever towing it. But kind of cool to have. If you wanted to tow it somewhere, you could flat tow it, being a manual transmission. Um, trying to think, oh, there's a spare rear bumper for it. When I got it, it had a uh, gray bumper as opposed to a chrome bumper. So I put a chrome bumper on it now, but the other one is included with the sale also. Um, as far as the body and everything goes, all I've done is cut and polish and wax the body. Everything you see was done by the previous owner. Um, as far as the, the top white paint, that was done at a body shop in Colorado. The paint receipt's in there. Uh, I'm imagining it was just because the old tan color, brown color, was starting to look kind of bad. Uh, it doesn't look like there's been any repairs or anything. There was no repairs on the receipt. So it was just paint the roof white. So that's what they did. So, and it gives the paint code for the, the white paint. Um, that being said, the paint on this van looks really nice, but it is old paint. Um, it does have a lot of shine to it. Like you can see my reflection in it, I'm sure. Um, but you get around to one side and you can see where the paint is getting kind of thin. Um, this van does not have rust. It has lived in Arizona its whole life. Um, you can see right back here is probably the worst part as far as paint not being there, but it still shines. So you can see my reflection in it. Still really nice looking paint for being 34 years old. So, all right. So now I will autistically go through this thing <laughs> and jump all around, I'm sure and hopefully hit everything that has gone on with it. So when I bought this van, it had sat for 19 years. Um, my objective was to make this thing run, drive, and take a road trip to Florida in it. Really wanted to go down to the Keys. Gas prices changed, we bought a business, and needless to say, we're not driving to the Keys this next month. So I'm gonna sell it and buy a newer conversion van and probably build that out, something that's a little more uh, user-friendly for us to camp in. So, kind of a sad day, but 
that's the backstory. We're probably, if it doesn't sell in the next week, we're going to take it up to Moab. It's got a locker in it. It's got all terrains on it. It is fully capable of making it from Lake Havasu City to Moab, Utah and back, which is over a thousand miles. Mechanically, it runs perfect. I have no concerns whatsoever. It's driven to Phoenix. It's driven to uh, Flagstaff. It's in the last two months, it's driven to Parker from Lake Havasu. Never had a problem. Drives great. Cruise control works in it. But we'll get into that later. Like I said, this is aut autistically all over the place, and I'm sorry because things just kind of come into my brain. So we'll get to it. The tires, they are a 30 by 950 by 15 BF Goodrich KO2. They were brand new, bought from Discount Tire here in Lake Havasu. I think I spent 900 bucks on the set of four. So they're brand new. They have maybe 2,000 miles on them, 2,500 miles. Um, the wheels are just a set of Western wheels. They are not the best. I mean, you can see some of them have like, uh, they need, they could really be cleaned up. They have a clear coat on them, but they still look really nice. Um, what else? I'll just kind of go through the whole thing as I walk by. I did not put this chrome strip on here. That was on there from the previous owner. So still looks nice. There's no rust. Like I said, no rust on this thing. It has lived in Lake Havasu City as far as I know its whole life. So getting into it, all the doors and windows work like they should. I'm not going to roll them down. You guys know how a window works. But I had the whole thing retinted. When I got it, it had purple bubbly tint. I had every window in this retinted. Um, wind wings, you name it. I even had a limo strip put up here it's got this cool looking metal visor that holds your your other visors it's kind of nice you can put your gun and money and wallet and sunglasses and stuff up there kind of so it's out of the way um, since we're in this side yes there's the third pedal it wasn't this wasn't a botched together um, manual transmission job like it is a factory ordered manual five-speed transmission in this van so it's got 53,557 miles I will start it up here in a few but there's all the gauges the windshield wipers work like they should all of the lights work like they should it has a tilt column that works the blinkers work correctly uh, the radio works it's old it doesn't sound great but it works um, the only thing I have not done to this van and there's receipts for over 2,500 bucks in this van for air conditioning work that was done in Las Vegas in the early 2000s. And they never converted it to 134A, I don't believe. Um, the air conditioning compressor kicks on when you turn this over to max norm, the air conditioning range. Um, I've never charged it. I imagine with it sitting for the past... 19 years. It, it just needs a charge. I can't say whether it needs a compressor. I've, that's the only thing in this whole van that I have not dug into is the air conditioning. So if it's a deal breaker, guys, I get it. It's hot. So just look for another one, I guess, because I'm not going to fix it and I'm not changing the price. I don't mean to sound like a jerk, but it's really the only thing I haven't done in this van is address the air conditioner. Um, that being said... I did a stupid little cup holder here that's just siliconed on there. Um, these are brand new, brand new seats. They were $1,400. Um, they were for a pickup truck. They were brand new from J.C. Whitney. They came with a center console, which obviously you're not going to use a center console. And it's even got a power lumbar that works correctly and is plugged in, has power, so you have lumbar. There is headrests. They're in my uh, garage right now. It just makes them kind of tall. I don't like the look of it, but the headrests are all there. But these are brand new. I mean, they were put in two weeks ago. Brand new, ordered. Um, yeah. So, hope this gives you a view of what all this looks like. So, back up. I will crawl under the van later and show you guys the underneath side. So here's the back end. It's got a receiver. Um, it's wired to tow a trailer. I don't know if that works. I've never towed anything with it. This is that other rear bumper I was telling you about. Um, that van was from Hawaii. Kind of cool. It's got the Hawaii sticker on it. This van was not from Hawaii. Don't freak out. There's no rust. This rear bumper was just on a van at a junkyard that I got. So. Uh, 
in the back. Pretty standard paneling on the doors. It's got carpet. Looks like a piece of maybe, I would say, half inch or three quarter inch plywood underneath that. This futon mattress does not come with it. I have another mattress that I can include, but this is ours that we use in every van that we travel in. And you guys probably don't want our old mattress anyways, but this is just a futon mattress that when we go camping, it works out bitching. But this is just a platform bed that you can store stuff underneath. It fits your spare tire under there, some bins. It makes traveling kind of nice. You have a place to sleep and it's some two by sixes. It's four two by sixes. All they are are screwed into the, the top of that. It, you could take this thing out if you needed it out of here in probably 10 minutes. So it's easy camping, easy sleeping, and easy to remove. It's got a coat rack in case you got stuff like that. I put some of these in here for camping. Makes it kind of nice. So. All right. So I will show you the dents in this because there is not very many, but I know there's a couple and they're very, very minor. Like, I don't know if you can even see that one. There's one right here. Gosh, that one doesn't even show up. There you go. You can kind of see it in the reflection. I mean, very minor. There's one right there. There's one on the driver's side. Um, there's no more in this. There's one right here in the back door. Actually, there's one right next to it also. So you can see how minor those are. So this thing's super dent-free. I mean, as far as most... 34 year old vans are considered there's a little where's my finger a little wave right there and then there's one in the driver's side door right oh gosh you can't even see it right there and that looks like somebody pushed it with their butt and it like it flexes and actually sometimes it pulls out it's kind of weird but there you go those are the dents so which is pretty awesome Okay, back where we were. Sorry, I got distracted. Alright. All the door jams. All the glass is good. Like I said, I had everything retinted. All these work. Door handles work like they should. This door handle works like it should. Yes, those are my stickers. If they offend you, I'm sorry. I mean, they're stickers. You can peel them off of there. So, like I said, it's got carpet throughout. Carpet's actually really nice. And again, all this, this bed, it's just got a screw in here that goes into this. And it did not go through the wheel well, so don't freak out. It didn't get into any metal. It just went into this box. You could remove this whole bed in a matter of five or ten minutes. So, you can see the old paneling. It's old. It's got some stuff that, you know, doesn't look fantastic, but it's what you get with an old van. Um, when I got this thing, I had to replace this window, and that window is now Lexan. It's really thick. It's probably, I mean, it's as thick as you could get, so it feels like glass. So, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, there's storage in the back of the seats, which is nice. All the seat belts work like they should. So this, when you close it, this locks it into place. You just push that up and that door is locked. All these locks work. I have keys for everything. Obviously stuff like this is old and droopy. It's had a dash mat its whole life. The dash is perfect underneath here. There's no cracks, no chips, no weird stuff. The dash mat saved it. The glass on the front does not have any chips in it. Like I said, there was a limo tint strip added. Um, all the visors work like they should and they're in good shape. There's storage up top. 
another new seat that matches the other new seat. Uh, they do recline also. They recline there. So there you go. Um, I guess I'll fire it up now. I walked around the whole thing. So this does have all of the smog equipment still on it. And I'm going to take a second to explain the, the smog equipment on this because I've had already had people ask me about smog in California or anywhere. I don't, I will not guarantee that this thing will pass smog anywhere. Um, it has a smog pump on it. You can hear it pumping air. It's got the O2 sensors that are O2 sensor. It's an upstream O2 sensor. That's all these had. It has two catalytic converters on it. There's no check engine light. There's never been a check engine light since I've owned it or driven it. Um, with that being said, I have no control whether this thing will pass smog. We do not have smog in Arizona, in Lake Havasu. So that is for you to roll the dice. Everything, as far as I know, is on this engine. I have never messed with anything emission-wise. Um, I imagine it would probably run way better if I got rid of the two catalytic converters, smog pump, and all the other crap it's got. But I don't want to deal with check engine lights or anything like that. So, And I didn't know where it was going. So um, everything is there. I've done my best to keep it that way in case this does go to a place that has emissions. So just know, as far as I'm concerned, visually it should pass smog. But I have no way of controlling if it will pass smog. I mean, it runs great. There's not a check engine light. This door's open. That's why it looks like that, just so you know. So, we'll fire it up. And the firing up process is kind of goofy. So, if you know the ignition in these Fords, sometimes they get a little wonky. So, what we do, we still have the correct key, which you can see. That's the regular key. It goes in the ignition. You turn it, and you see this check engine light and you hear the fuel pump and we turn the radio off <clears throat> and that tells you that it's ready to start your ignition does not turn what i've done is bypass that which is kind of cool for theft too let's make sure oh, come on. it's awkward there you go neutral okay so i put an ignition switch in which is right here so there's your ignition switch and you can watch everything come up. Oil pressure always runs right between low and high. Never an issue with oil pressure. Temperature always runs between N, O, and R. I have never, ever, ever had an issue with overheating or any type of cooling problem with this, which is a blessing because I've had these with 302s and 351s, and they are a nightmare. They've been a nightmare, so... This thing's been really awesome when it comes to like long drives and the heat and stuff. It just does great. Um, even even around town, it does fine. So I've never had an issue with heating uh, or overheating or any type of thing like that. So that's running. Um, you guys heard the radio. It does have, as far as I can tell, the stock muffler. There's the muffler. There's, I'll go through all the new stuff that it has here shortly, but you can see the new shocks. There's one catalytic converter. There's another catalytic converter. And up ahead is an H pipe that has the O2 sensor in it. And if I can do this, you can kind of hear it there, it sounds normal. If I can do this with one hand, Give me a second. I'm gonna try to open the hood with one hand. So bear with me. Yeah, there it is. Throwing away. 4.9 liter inline six. It's what it always had. Nothing's been changed. So I will get into what I put in this thing here shortly. It's got new uh, heater hoses. Uh, heater, um, oh, what is that? Heater core, uh, special clamps so those don't leak. So, yeah, there's under the hood. 
suspension stuff, belt routing. Don't get your dick stuck in stuff. Okay. So that is running. And like I said, this thing, I would drive it anywhere. I've never, ever, ever had an issue with it. Um, it is a five speed, which is awesome. When I was driving to Phoenix, I was doing 75, 80 down the highway. I got between 15 and 17 miles per gallon, and that was probably because I was pushing it. So if you're cruising 55, 65, it'd probably do even better, but I don't know what highway does 55 <laughs> anymore. So um, yeah, so then turning it off, everything is normal. You turn it off and there is a switch, almost like the old school Toyotas right over here, which is a key release. And that's how you get your key out. And it's like a two hand deal. So there's that guy. So horn works, the cruise control works. Gosh, hang on, having a brain fart here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. So, um, yeah. Oh, I was gonna get into what I've done to this thing. So when I got the van, obviously it had sat for years and years and years. And I started making a list of everything this van would need because I did not spare any expense because we were taking this thing on a trip. I did everything you could possibly think of when it comes to this van. Every fluid that could be changed or needed to be changed. Rear end fluid was changed with posi rear end fluid, rear end gear oil. Um, it does have a, a, a locker in the rear, a posi in the rear. Um, transmission was serviced, drained, and refilled with the correct transmission fluid. Engine oil filter was done, obviously. Um, power steering and brakes were fine. The brakes, there was actually a receipt in there. The brakes were just done right before it was parked 19 years prior. And the brake, um, the brake rotors hadn't even, they hadn't even been worn. It, it was, it was crazy. So the brakes on this thing are all brand new. There's a receipt in there for, I think it was like a thousand dollars. The guy had the brakes redone. So the brakes are brand new on the thing. Um, it's got brand new serpentine belt, um, upper and lower radiator hose, all new coolant. Everything was flushed. Uh, like I said, it's got new heater, um, heater core, um, hoses and uh, like a billet clamp on there because the factory ones suck and they leak. Um, gosh, there's probably something else that I'm missing that I've like done. Oh, the fuel system. So obviously the fuel system, the fuel sucks these days with ethanol. So I put a brand new fuel tank in it. So spent 150 bucks on a brand new fuel tank. Never even tried to start it on the old fuel tank because I knew it was trash, but it had a whole new fuel tank put in. Um, also, when I put the fuel tank in, if you have ever been under one of these, they have a, a filter that, okay, so back up. It's got a new fuel tank and a new fuel pump and a new electric fuel pump that is upstream also. So it's got two new fuel pumps. So then we're getting back to the back where there was a fuel filter in the back. That fuel filter is obsolete and it's a canister and you can't find it and it was dripping. So I went and got the correct fittings and I um, replaced it. I'm actually gonna show you guys in the video because if anybody else has an Econoline with problems, this is a pretty cool solution. So, oh gosh, how do I get back there? So, right up under here, there was a fuel filter that sat right here like a canister and you can't find that canister or that filter anymore. So I bypassed it with these fittings. And this is so you could keep those existing um, fuel lines, but they're all pressure fittings, they're all made correctly. And this goes back up to the new fuel tank, which is right here. You can see the new fuel tank. So I put all new shocks, um, front and rear. I guess now that I'm down here, it kind of jump starts my memory as far as what was done. Um, so, uh, the front, I lifted the front, um, it's like a two, maybe inch and a half lift. And all it is, is it's spacers. So I just wanted it to sit kind of level so I could fit a set of thirties. So it's literally just a set of, of washers that, that evens it out. So it doesn't ride like a, um, like a pickup truck higher in the back. So. 
Um, I hope that answers all the questions. Oh, I'll get into that little box of receipts. I'm probably going longer than I should on this thing, but I want somebody to know what it's all about. So here is the box of receipts. And I mean, there's piles and piles of receipts in this thing. Like here's one for there's my discount tire receipt. Um, Here's the Ghoulies Garage receipt that shows that it was a posi. Where is it? Somewhere in here. Clutch was redone. Um, Where's this bill? $821, but it says something... Somewhere in here. Oh well, but it's got a it's got a posse in the rear. I don't know why I can't find it right now. But if you're looking at this, you're probably staring at it, going, "Hey, stupid! It's right there." So, yeah. Oh, there it is. I see it. Posse. There it is, right there. So, got a posse in it. Um, it does. So. The seats that were in it were just the factory low backs. It's kind of cool. This old upholstery shop in Havasu called Papa Joe's Upholstery redid it way back in the day for 380 bucks. And those seats are in good shape as far as the upholstery goes. They're not worn. But one of the brackets, um, the welds broke. So I'll include those. They're just the standard low back seat. I have no use for them, so I'll pass them on. Um, Here's... Here's the receipts for all the air conditioning stuff that went into this, and it got extensive. So it was a place up in Vegas, I believe. Yep. I mean, there's a receipt for $1,700 for um, air conditioning stuff that was done. So, (laughs) and I don't have the remote, but apparently in 1998, the old previous owner decided decided that he was going to put power locks in this thing. So it's got power locks. I don't. They don't work. So yeah. But there's just piles and piles of receipts and papers. And this guy was kind of cool. He kept a lot of stuff, which made it kind of nice. And then there's some little doodads. The cigarette lighter. Um, it doesn't smell like smoke. Uh, it, it looks like somebody has smoked, but. I mean, it doesn't smell like smoke in here. Here is two sets of door pins, which is kind of nice. Um, sooner than later, the driver's side door, you could probably replace these door pins. I imagine that's why he had these in here. Here's those little things that go by the door locks. that keep this piece right there. And some fuses. So, yeah, there you go, guys. There's, oh, and then the original... Um, owner's manual. I don't have the window sticker on this, unfortunately. That would have been kind of cool. But, like I said, this is the full rundown that I can give you on this van. I'll walk around it one more time for you guys. I'm going to post it for sale on Inland Empire Craigslist, California, Las Vegas Craigslist, Nevada, Mojave County Craigslist, Arizona, Phoenix Craigslist, Arizona. And I'm not going to give a number on this video. Um, You'll see it in the ad because I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to sell it for yet. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be around 15,000 bucks, but we'll get to that when it's listed. So I hope I have shown everything. I'll get up right here real quick so you can see um, all the drip rails. There's no rust. So there's a couple dents up here. There you go. So I hope I have been very, very thorough on this van. If it's something that you're looking for, leave me a message. It's super unique. You won't find another five-speed 1988 fuel-injected six-cylinder van like this, I don't think. Um, And there's no rust. So crawl under the front real quick so you guys can see that too. New shocks up front. (laughs) 
All right, guys. <clears throat> Thanks for <laughs> watching me be all over the place with this. I hope it explains everything. Uh, leave any comments or questions. Uh, happy vanning.